Okay, so this is our fingerprints, which is our crime scene investigation presentation. This is 2020's fingerprint presentation. So, uh, first off, what's a fingerprint? A fingerprint is a are the ridges that are on your skin of your fingers. Everybody's fingerprints are different. Fingerprints are the same for your whole life. Like the ridges themselves might space out slightly or be bigger when your fingers get bigger, but the actual print itself is the same for your whole life. Fingerprints have patterns that allow them to be classified and studied. So we break fingerprints into three groups, arches, loops, and whorls. Those are the three categories of fingerprints. So arches, first off, uh, you can enter in on one side here, and it sort of curves like that in an arc. So there we go. I'll use my pointer right there. So whoa, see right there. That's the arc. Whoops, back. So this is the arc here for the arch. Uh, approximately 6% of people have arched patterns. This is a plain arch. And notice it comes in on one side and exits out the other side of the print. Then here, what I'd like you to do is to circle the one that you think is an arch. And most of you are on the pear deck doing this with me in class, but if you're at home, I want you to go ahead and try and stop the video for a second and try and find which one of these prints is most likely an arch. Now, tented arches are ridges enter in on one side and exit on the other side, just like with a regular arch, but notice they're a much sharper peak in the center right there. There's a nicer, like, up and down. So those are called tented arches. About 6% of people have this pattern. Uh, this print has a spike of arches in the center right in here, which makes it really easy to identify. So I want you to stop the video again, see if you can identify a tented arch in any of these fingerprints. Did you know dactyloscopy is the study of fingerprint identification? Police investigators are experts in collecting dactylograms, which are otherwise known as fingerprints. So this is just kind of one of those things that you'll hear about sometimes people talking about dactylograms or yeah, dactylograms. So that's kind of what they're talking about are just fingerprints. So if you're on the pear deck, you're going to draw a left loop on the pear deck. So here's the deal. Loops uh, enter on one side and exit on the same side. So take, for example, this guy. He's up, he's over, and he exits on the same side. If you follow the line around, they enter and exit on the same side. And they are named for the direction they lean. This one comes in from the left, so this is called a left loop. This one comes in from the right, so this would be called a right loop. So on the pear deck, we asked you to draw a left loop. If you're doing this in your notebook, then obviously I would in my notebook pause this and draw a left loop. Remember, it's coming in from the left, it's a left loop. If it comes in from the right, it's a right loop. So this top one's a left loop, bottom one's a right loop. Now, uh, you also have central pocket loops in uh, that's another kind of a loop pattern. These ridges enter on one side, exit on the other side. So you see that they kind of enter and exit. So if I follow this up and around, but it forms they don't really lean to one side or the other. They don't start on one side and kind of lean one direction or the other. So they kind of form these circular patterns in the center. Um, how is a central pocket loop different than a left or a right loop? The idea being you would be able to tell me that 
these don't lean in one direction or the other, they're just centralized. So that's the trick to a central pocket loop. Uh, double loops. Double loops are interesting. The ridges enter on one side and exit on the other side, but the two loops form an S shape at the center and we call them double loops. So see right here, there's my S shape. It's kind of like a little wiggle dance going on there. Right in the middle of the print, that S shape in the middle makes it a double loop. So see if you can find a double loop in any of these prints. If not a double loop, do you see any other loops? Do you see a left loop or a central pocket loop? Do you see a right loop? So go ahead and see if you can identify and pause the video if you need to. Whorls. Whorls are a little different. They look similar to a central pocket loop, except that in this case, the ridges are circles or spirals all the way through. Uh, approximately 34% of people have these whorls. Uh, this is a plain central whorl. So how is a whorl different from a double loop? So notice this central part. There's a point in the center and then everything is just concentric circles out. It does look kind of similar to the double loop except the double loop has the S. The central pocket loop, notice, there's a spot in the center but these aren't necessarily concentric on the way out. And notice you can tell the difference because they've got these extra pieces here. They aren't concentric all the way out where whorls are. So that's a whorl. Uh, there are also what are called accidental whorls. These rigids are two sets of circles or spirals. These whorls seem to blend together in the center and this kind of to me looks like a mushroom shape. So that's why the mushroom picture is because it looks to me like these accidental whorls are more like a mushroom shape in the center. So now inside of any print we have what are called ridge details, very minor prints. So the idea here is that you're going to draw these into your notebook so that you have them so you can kind of see them. When we examine fingerprints we use a magnifying glass or a microscope almost always and we try and identify the different kinds of ridge details so as to match a specific print to an exemplar. So we're looking for things like cores right there. They're looking for this little point right in the center. That's the core. An ending ridge would be a line that just stops. A short ridge, you have both the beginning and the end in a very small amount of space. Forks or bifurcated, it looks like a forked river, see, or a branch where you can see that it goes in two different directions. Then you have a delta where it looks like they're coming together and forming one. See how these look more like they're coming together than they're going apart. These look like they're splitting apart. Uh, you also have a hook, which is when you have a line that's going sort of in the opposite direction. So the horizontal generally is the print, and then you have these little hooks in here. That would be something to help you identify. This kind of looks like an eye, so they call it an eye. Uh, a dot or an island in the middle of the print is usually like a little circle. It's just right in the middle of a ridge. Crossovers here, obviously named because the two lines cross over. A bridge is when you have a hook that doesn't stop. It goes all the way between these two horizontal lines. You have a vertical bridge. Enclosures are like having an eye, but there's something in the middle of it. So there's a dot or a line in the middle of that eye. And uh, these are a weird specialty sort of thing. So it's got this strange little shape right in the middle of the print. That's going to be unique to this person. That's going to make it much easier to identify these prints if we have all of these ridge details and they're in our notebook. So if you need to, go ahead and pause and go ahead and make sure you draw this all in your notebook. Uh, 
at the end here, we usually ask you to take a minute to write down the most interesting thing or a quick summary of what we did in today's lesson, which was all about fingerprints. Our next activity is going to be actually taking and examining fingerprints, so that should be really fun now that we know what different kinds of fingerprints there are for us to look at.